The Catholic Archdiocese of Baltimore will need to disclose more of its third party assets in its historic bankruptcy filing. WJZ is live on Cathedral Street. Paul Gessler is outside the Archdiocese with an update from the federal bankruptcy hearing. Paul. Yeah, an injunction remains in place against lawsuits for move, moving forward against the church until all this can get better sorted out. Now, the U.S. District Court judge in charge of this bankruptcy case said that she was, quote, pleased by the progress both sides were making, saying that she, quote, wants this to be more than lip service when it comes to the church's financial transparency. Abuse survivors and attorneys packed the ninth floor courtroom at Baltimore's federal courthouse Monday. They need to be accountable for their lives. It's the latest chapter in the Chapter 11 filing. The church declaring bankruptcy as a flood of sexual abuse claims pile up. This year's attorney general report identified more than 160 clergy and other church staff accused of abusing more than 600 victims. A new law in effect last month eliminated the statute of limitations in child sex abuse claims. The judge is set to rule on how long survivors have to file claims during the bankruptcy process. It's the church that made this happen that enabled the rapists to continue. The church, the property of the church needs to be responsible. The church last week filed a summary of assets and liabilities ranging from a $17 office stool to its nearly $5.8 million office building downtown. Archdiocese lawyers Monday agreed to provide more information on so-called third-party assets, individual churches and schools, as well as property transfers to get a clearer picture of its financials. It's a veil of secrecy um, that we have to push aside so we can see just how much they have. It's our turn to say to them, this is what we want you to bear. This is what we what we need from you. The judge also appeared set on giving victims a chance to come forward during this bankruptcy process. There's a lot of us out there that just want the public to know how how despicable it was, how horrible it was, what what we went through, rape as children. Other survivors want church leadership to be compelled to sit in court. If a survivor wants Archbishop Laurie in that courtroom, he should have to be there, or some church official. I. I he has to hear those stories. The bankruptcy process is playing out as another church closes its doors. The Archdiocese confirms St. Benedict in southwest Baltimore will close this month following an allegation of sexual abuse against a priest. Church officials citing a lack of clergy available. Now, this bank bankruptcy process is expected to take years. With regard to that call for Archbishop Lurie to be in the courtroom, from you heard from David Lorenz, the Maryland director of SNAP, I reached out to the archdiocese, and a spokesman said that all survivors are offered a personal meeting with Archbishop Lurie. For now, reporting live on Cathedral Street at 5, I'm Paul Gessler for WJZ. Paul, thank you. Let's